In this lesson, we will continue part one of company law by having a quick glance at what the nature of a legal personality is. Quite simply, coming in from our previous lesson on the different forms of business organization, the law or the courts of law will recognize a properly established company as one which has its own legal personality. Just like you'd be able to sue and be sued in relation to a normal individual, so too would a company. Now, if you are familiar with commercial law or the law of agency for that matter, you'd understand the fact that um, there are agents that can work on your behalf. And as long as they work within the authority that they have been granted, their actions indemnify them from such actions. So for example, if you have instructed someone to do something and that individual has done so based on your instructions, chances are that you are the one who is liable and you have indemnified your agent of it. When we consider a company, any individual working within the authority granted to him or her by the company is thereby exempted from his or her actions, as long as it's within the instructions and within the authority. This is what we mean by the legal personality. The fact that when a company functions, although it cannot function on its own, rather it having to function through, through these individuals, like directors, like employees for that matter, the ultimate legal personality or the ultimate legal relations that's created by the company is by the company itself, not those specific individuals. So quite simply, a company can sue as well as be sued in its own name because the law recognizes that a company, a properly formed company, has its own legal personality. Now, while uh, the governance of these aspects are not specified within the Companies Act of 2006, there are several precedent and seminal cases that you should go through in order to understand how this concept of legal personality works. Make sure you have a look at the case summaries included with this lesson and with company law, uh, the course itself at large, so that you can get a better grasp of how these precedent cases play a role in identifying and outlining the limitations as well as the length and breadth of uh, companies in relation to its legal personality. So for example, you have seminal cases like Salomon and Salomon Company, which essentially outlined the fact that um, registration itself, the proper formalities itself is sufficient in order to consider something as a company. In other words, the conduct of the parties or the purpose for which the company was made, even though it might have been a shell corporation for that matter, is irrelevant according to the House of Lords. Now, mind you, these are all the cases as well. So there have been criticisms. It has been distinguished as well on many accounts. So make sure you understand this by virtue of going through the case summaries as well. Similarly, you have Macquarie and Northern Assurance Company, which outlined the fact that once certain elements have been transferred to the company by individual, irrespective of whether the individual's ownership of said assets or goods were transferred without consideration for that matter, the company now becomes the officiator or the owner of such assets. And whatever in relation to those assets must be dealt in relation to the company itself. This too was a decision by the House of Lords, something that's outlined further in the case summaries. Lee and Lee's air farming is another distinctive case which essentially denoted the fact that regardless of the position an individual holds within the company, even in the format of a master-servant relationship, the legal personalities themselves are capable of entering into legal relationships with each other. Um, this is quite a controversial case on its own and it has been distinguished as well as if you look at um, the case summaries, you'll I understand how exactly the rationale plays out. You also have uh, Barings PLC and Coppers and Librand number no. 4, a 2002 case which outlines the fact that when considering, a, let's say, a multinational or a larger conglomerate, the parent company as well as its subsidiary must be considered individually. They do not 
intersect with one another in terms of legal personality, since a parent company's actions and that of a subsidiary are considered as two different things uh, in the eyes of the law. Now, you'll notice that these cases are not the only cases that are out there in order to distinguish and define the extent of how the legal personality works in relation to a company. But having said that, it's important to distinguish and understand the difference between what we mean in terms of a company which has limited liability as well as what we mean as a separate legal personality. Now, on the one hand, you'll hear um, throughout this course as well, as well as your study of company law, this term of limited liability and that being one of the primary advantages of having a company in the first place. Essentially, limited liability denotes the fact that a shareholder can only be held accountable or liable during the liquidation for whatever he has put in to the company. The liability or your risk factor is limited to what you have, the stake that you have within the company itself. And this is what we mean as limitation of liability or limited liability company. On the other hand, however, when we talk about a company having a separate legal personality, what this denotes is the fact that just like we looked at uh, a few moments ago, a company in the eyes of the law is given recognition and the ability to sue on its own behalf as well as be sued by others in its own name rather than specifically looking at the individuals within the company taking those actions. Later on in our lessons, we'll go through a topic known as the veil of incorporation. In essence, the protections afforded to the agents or the officiators of the company, like directors and employees and so on and so forth. This separate legal personality and separating those individuals from the company itself will become much more clearer in that context.